What do you make of the rally we're seeing straight off the bat? Yeah, what I make of it is, of course, uh, the third term for Modi uh, government is going to be a great news because uh, capital markets love status quo, point one. Point two, uh, the kind of liquidity which has come from the domestic side, we, uh, we believe that will continue, and that's where valuations, re-ratings are possible. So point two, point three, I, I, I think that the broader market in India uh, has done well over the last one, one quarter years. I think that uh, differential performance between the uh, headline index of Nifty and Sensex relative to the small cap and the mid cap index should further continue uh, because uh, uh, they were. this is the best case scenario uh, from a capital market standpoint because the last time the NDA, which is nothing but the uh, allies plus the BJP, had 1,352. If anything more than that, there's also going to be a sentimental booster. Uh, the kind of capital expenditure this government has done, if that's going to be continuing for the next five years, the kind of uh, GDP growth and the multiplier effect on the economy and the tax collections is going to be visible and that's where the fiscal deficits could fall. So that's the excitement all about and I think this should sustain for longer periods of time than a couple of days. Faroz, talk to us about potential winners bearing in mind the kind of policies that Modi stands for. We know that he wants to push uh, infrastructure investment, he wants to push manufacturing, and a lot of people have said that perhaps, you know, all the stocks that, uh, uh, that belong to the Adani Ambani circle would do really, really well. Yes, Aslinda, that's definitely uh, one of the uh, key ones because, like you rightly pointed out, uh, uh, manufacturing and infrastructure. Infrastructure is a broader theme: defense, railways, uh, roads, uh, are, are, and and uh, and uh, hardcore manufacturing are definitely going to get a push. That's one space, and like the Adani's and the Ambani's and the big conglomerates. Uh, of manufacturing and uh, other other businesses will also get a push. But the most important push would come to the PSUs because the way PSUs have been uh, undervalued in India and they've been always called value stocks because the way they function is very different than the private sector of India. I think that's uh, that perception is changing. So the re-rating of the PSU, which happened over the last couple of years, will continue to happen and in a way very different way. So over the last couple of decades, the differential between PPEs, between, uh, for example, in financial services, between an SBI and an HDFC, that should converge over the next three, four years. So PSUs, uh, especially financial services PSUs, uh, because of the capital market infrastructure also developing over the next four, five years, will uh, deplete. So you're absolutely right. Infrastructure stocks, some private sector conglomerates, and the PSUs, uh, and the CPSC index, which represents PSUs, will do beautifully well. I mean, it is a market that's pretty much been driven by domestic investors. I'm just wondering whether this election will be enough to perhaps lure foreign investment in a big way. Yes, I personally think if you look at uh, flows from the 1st of April till, uh, till uh, yesterday, uh, there's about four and a half billion dollars which have been sold. So FIIs have gone into this election result being very very light. Uh, if you look at the index short positions which uh, increased uh, off FIIs, Significantly, so 87%, 86% short, with RV 14% long, is one of the least I have seen from a long standpoint. So FIs have gone light. Last year, they added about uh, close to $24 billion in the Indian capital markets on the cash side. Uh, they've redeemed about four, four and a half billion. I think they will reverse that position and become net positive in this financial year over the next 10 uh, trading sessions. And the FII shots, which are 87% on the index level, uh, should come down below 50% in the next four, five trading sessions. So that's going to be a lot of short covering. I think you, FIIs are uh, generally on the on the election day over the last last three general elections have net been net buyers of close to about half a billion dollar the last time around. I think this time there would be larger buyers as well. And the domestic flows will continue because India has about um, 8 trillion uh, uh, rupees, 8 trillion, pro, 8 trillion uh, pro, uh, rupees of uh, uh, household savings out of which only about 4 5% is in equity. Uh, so the paradigm shift between debt and equity for the domestic investor will continue because the sentiment doesn't get dampened uh, because of the status right. quo and the third term for the government. For us, it does seem like all the stars are aligned for India. 8% growth. We have S&P uh, saying that it might just uh, raise India's uh, sovereign credit rating within the, the next 24 months. We have the RBI coming uh, out with a uh, better than expected dividend. Talk to us about the possibility of risks in the Indian market. What has not been factored in? 
I think the the larger the larger risk uh, to my mind from a Indian capital market standpoint is the uh, tight turning from the domestic flows perspective. Uh, that's one. From the economy standpoint, I think the GST collections need to grow uh, faster. If you look at the uh, GST collection for the last year, is eleven point four percent growth. Uh, previous year there was almost about a twenty percent growth. Uh, so the growth slowed down. Of course, we are at the peak of the GST collection, but the growth in direct taxes has been greater than the indirect taxes. Uh, so that's point two. GST collection has to further grow. You know, if we have to grow our capital expenditure at the rate which we project to do over the next three four years, that's the second uh, risk. And the third part is that the rate cycle uh, uh, should not get deferred in terms of correction because the rates have been still elevated on the short end of the yield curve. These are the three risks uh, for this financial year. I would see very closely uh, and and uh, take my decisions.